Dear students, now I am going to explain the viva questions for Newton's rings experiment. So as usual, first we have to discuss the aim apparatus formula required for that experiment that, is, that are important viva questions always in the examination. So first, what is the aim of the experiment? To determine the radius of curvature of a plano convex lens by using Newton's rings. Okay, so here we are going to find the radius of curvature. Okay, radius of curvature is represented by R. We are going to find the radius of curvature for the plano convex lens. One side plane, another side convex. For this lens, we are going to find the radius of curvature by forming the Newton strings. This is the aim of the experiment. Next, apparatus. A plano convex lens of known focal length, glass plate, sodium vapor lamp, Newton's microscope setup and then reading lens. So these are the apparatus required for this experiment. Next formula required for this experiment. We are going to find the radius of curvature R is equal to d square m minus d square n divided by 4 lambda m minus n its unit is centimeter. Let us discuss one by one. What is the lambda? Lambda is the wavelength of the sodium vapor lamp. Okay, so actually the wavelength of the sodium vapor lamp is 5890 into 10 to the power of minus 8 centimeter. That is lambda 1. Sodium vapor lamp consists of two wavelengths 5896 into 10 to the power of minus 8 centimeter. So, these are the wavelength of the sodium vapor lamp. Okay. So, for our convenience to substitute in the formula, we are going to take the average lambda is equal to 5893 into 10 to the power of minus 8 centimeter. 8 centimeter. So, this is the wavelength we are going to use in this formula. And R is the radius of curvature of the plano convex lens. It is represented in centimeter. And dm and dn are the diameters of mth and nth dark ring. Okay. And m and n are the number of rings. Okay. We are going to choose our own interest only. m and n are the number of rings. Starting with the central spot should be dark. Central, central, central spot should be dark. Right. Next. What are Newton's rings? This, see, this is the diagram I shown for your reference. So, alternate bright and dark. Black color is the dark ring and in between two blacks, we are having the yellow color. So, that is bright ring. So, alternate dark and bright rings are formed. Okay, due to the presence of air flame when plano convex lens is placed on the glass plate. Actually, this is the plano convex lens, okay, which is placed over the thick glass plate. Okay, so in the center, the convex lens touches the thick glass plate. Okay, and then the thickness of the air flame is keep on changing. So, in between these two, the air flame is formed. The air is enclosed between the plano convex lens and the thick glass plate. So, due to that, the rings are formed. Alternate dark and bright rings are formed due to the presence of air flame when plano convex lens is placed on the thick glass plate. Right? So, how the Newton's rings are formed? This is the arrangement. So, this part already we have discussed for the Newton's rings uh, formation. Now, you see, this is the sodium vapor lamp. From that, the ray is pausing in this direction. In the path of the light, we kept to a glass plate, which is inclined at an angle of 45 degree. Why this setup is done means then only the light can fall normal to the air flame, normal to the air flame. Okay, so for that reason only, we arrange it like this and the rays will be reflected and it will be observed through the traveling microscope. So, this is the setup. Okay, so here how the light will be reflected. This is the plano convex lens and this is the glass plate. So, here this is the top of the air flame and this is the bottom of the air flame. So, the light will be reflected by upper and lower top and bottom surface of the air flame these two rays will interfere with each other and produce the interference pattern okay so that is what the explanation given here they are formed due to the result of interference between light wave reflected from upper and lower surface of the air flame upper and lower or top and bottom developed between plano convex uh, convex surface of the plano convex lens under the thick glass plate okay so i hope you can understand this from this diagram clearly right
Next, what is the basic principle of Newton's rings experiment? As you know, well, the basic principle is interference. Okay, so interference and uh, another thing also you can add that is division of amplitude method. Division of amplitude. Actually, the basic principle is interference and the in, uh, Newton's rings are formed by the method of division amplitude. So, both you have to remember for the principal part. Okay, one is interference and another one is division of amplitude. Right? Next, what is interference? So, two waves are going to interfere with each other. So, at this point of superposition the amplitude will be changed that means the resultant intensity will be changed that means light will be modified the light intensity is modified at this region of superposition okay it may be increased or it may be decreased so that is what interference when the two waves superimpose over each other the resultant intensity is modified it may be increased or it may be decreased so the modification in the distribution of intensity is called interference interference okay next what are interference fringes so just now we have discussed alternate bright and dark bands of the light is obtained in the region of superposition where it is superimposing in that place we will get the alternate bright and dark bands okay because of the superposition of two light waves is it clear so this pattern is called the interference pattern next which light do you use in this experiment? So here we have to use the monochromatic light. Especially for this experiment, we are going to use sodium vapor lamp. Okay. Next. Suppose what will happen if you use white light in this experiment instead of monochromatic, uh, instead of the sodium vapor lamp, if you are using white light, that is mercury vapor lamp, what will happen? The colored fringes will be formed. So here I have given the example too. So easily you can understand it. Okay. Next, if you replace yellow light with green light, is there any difference in the formation of rings? Actually, we are using yellow color light. So, alternate bright and yellow dark color rings we are observing. But here, if we replace this by means of green color light, what will happen? See, both are monochromatic only, either yellow color or green color. So, there is no change in the formation of the rings because both are monochromatic. Suppose white light means it is the mercury vapor lamp. It's a polychromatic. All colors are mixed together. That's what we are getting the colors like this. Okay. But yellow or green means both are monochromatic light only. Okay. So, no. Because both are monochromatic lights. Right. Suppose here one place we are getting the dark ring and another place bright ring. Is there any energy loss in the interference phenomenon? There is no energy loss because the energy is redistributed. Okay. So, the energy in the dark place is shifted to the bright place. Okay. The energy is not at all lost over here. It should be redistributed. Right. So, that is what we have to understand. No, there is only redistribution of energy. Energy from dark places shifted to the bright places. Right. Next, what are the applications of the Newton strings? Here in this experiment, we are going to find the radius of curvature. But by using the Newton strings, what are the other applications we can? That we can calculate the lambda value of the unknown source. Okay. Suppose any other light instead of sodium vapor lamp, if they are giving any other light, we can find the wavelength of the source and optical flatness of the surface for any lens. If you want to check the optical surface, that can be done by means of the Newton strings experiment and then refractive index of the liquid so if you want to find the refractive index for any liquid that also we can done by using this newton strings experiment so these are the applications of the newton strings experiment next why the what is the function of 45 degree inclined glass plate in experiment setup so already i said that this glass plate is inclined at an angle of 45 degree why? Because to make the light rays to fall normal to the air flame, to fall normal to the air flame. So that if it is inclined at 45 degree, then only the light will fall normal to the air flame. For that reason, it is inclined at 45 degree. It turns the light ray coming from an extended source to 90 degree normal. And so the ray fall normal on the plano convex lens that is after that air flame. Right. So this is what the explanation for that. 
why rings gets closer as their order increases okay so first if you see some gap will be there between first ring second ring like that but if it goes on increasing it will be very much closer why it is happening like that why because listen carefully the diameter of dark fringes is directly proportional to square root of natural numbers okay dark ring is proportional to square root of natural numbers and bright ring is directly proportional to square root of odd numbers okay these two are not same that is the reason when we go outwards it will be in the rings are getting closer due to the diameter difference right next what happens if you use plain plain glass in experiment setup instead of convex lens instead of the plain uh, plano convex lens if you use the glass plate okay what will happen that that means there won't be any formation of rings or otherwise if the rings for, forms also it will be irregular why because we have to that means the air film should be uniformly distributed then only we can able to find the uh, we can able to form the newton rings okay next why is the center of the dark ring uh, that means center of the ring is dark okay why the center of the ring is dark see here in the center this is the center this point is the center so the light is reflected okay the thickness of the air film is equal to zero in this place if the thickness of the air film is zero in the sense the both the light waves are uh, that means um, interfering in phase with each other it should be in phase with each other but the one of the light is reflected by the denser medium reflected by the denser medium so the phase will be changed okay how much it will be changed it will be out of phase instead of in phase the light one of the light ray is reflected by the denser medium so it with the phase change will takes place that phase will become out of phase now so instead of brightness we will get the darkness over here okay so that is the reason we are getting the dark at the center right and uh, what do you mean by coherent sources it, it is very important if interference means automatically we need the coherent sources then only the interference will take place it is the main condition so two waves we need for interfering we need two waves the two waves should be produced by the two sources but the two sources should be coherent sources two sources should be coherent sources so the coherent sources can be produced by means of two methods one is division of wavefront method and another one is division of amplitude method okay already i said here we are going to use division of amplitude method okay that means the two sources should have same frequency and the same phase are constant phase difference this two should be maintained properly the two sources should maintain same frequency wavelength nearly of the same amplitude mainly phase or constant phase difference okay so then only the two sources should be known as coherent sources the two sources are said to be coherent if they emit continuous light waves of same frequency same wavelength same amplitude and mainly same phase or constant phase then only the two sources should be set as coherent sources right next what is constructive interference and destructive interference so now in that result we are getting bright and dark fringes bright and dark rings right so why it is coming like that we are the interference is takes place in the region of superposition if you are getting the maximum intensity then it is called constructive interference its result will be bright if suppose in the place of superposition we are getting the minimum intensity okay this is maximum this is minimum if it is minimum then it is called destructive interference its result will be dark its result will be dark okay its result will be dark when two light waves interfere at each other such that the resultant intensity at a point increase due to the dis interference of two waves here both are making the maximum intensity that is called bright constructive interference its result will be bright 
if the intensity is minimum then it is called destructive interference its result will be dark right this is what you have to understand and next in neutron strings experiment bright and dark rings are obtained using sodium yellow light already we know that if the entire arrangement is dipped into the water then the diameter of the rings so what will happen to the diameter the diameter of the rings will be decreases okay if you dip like that so by using this rings we can find the refractive index also okay so refractive index means actually d square m minus d square n in air first we have to find in the air and the same thing to be repeated in liquid in liquid so now you see the diameter should be decreased the diameter of the rings should be decreases inversely proportional right if you increase that means if you dip into the water the diameter of the rings will be decreased and by use this is the formula for finding the refractive index of the liquid by using this experiment right next very important one what is mean by radius and the radius of curvature right listen the radius is for a real figure okay real fi figure or shape but the radius of curvature is an imaginary circle now you see this is the con concave lens right for this shape image that means for this curved image i would like to find the radius means that is called radius of curvature why because i have to draw the imaginary circle for this then only i can able to find the radius so that's what the radius of curvature is an imaginary circle i have to draw the imaginary circle and then i have to find the radius from the center so this is radius of curvature if suppose for any uh, ball spherical ball it is the full shape if i am finding the radius then it is called radius for imaginary part it is called radius of curvature right and this diagram will help you to understand see this one if the radius is small the curvature is high the curvature is high if the large radius then curvature should be low okay so this will be the difference understand clearly if the radius is small curvature should be high if the radius is large curvature should be low okay this relation also we should try to understand i hope you can understand this things whatever we discussed please go through that if you have any doubt regarding this viva questions you can ask in the comment box thank you everyone <laughs>